first the rains in the small southern African nation of Malawi were welcomed. A sigh of relief to a parched country that had endured three years of extreme drought and related health problems. By April 1996, however, the rain had outstayed its welcome. Dramatically and almost ironically, Malawians watched as their previously dry crops were washed away in the flood waters. Roads and bridges were severely damaged and houses were destroyed. The area hardest hit was in the south of the country, near Nsanje, where thousands were left homeless, including this woman from a nearby village. <laughs> Working out of Nsanje District Headquarters, Elizabeth Bison Piri, Red Cross Divisional Coordinator in Nsanje, worked with the Red Cross in assisting the victims and putting things back in order. Food aid has been provided, along with clothing and shelter. We saw about nine leaders coming from the Linde Marsh. They went to the DC's office to complain that there were floods. Their homes have been destroyed. After discussions, we agreed that they come to the Sanj headquarters district. And then we agreed that we give them shelter using the community center hall. Disasters like these are nothing new to Malawi. As recently as 1992, Malawi faced an equally devastating flood which left thousands homeless. But the issue of relief in Malawi is much more complicated than floods, droughts and health-related concerns. As we shall see, other concerns like refugee assistance and long-term development also play an important role in defining the Red Cross in Malawi today. The Red Cross has been a vital part of Malawi since 1932, when it began as a branch of the British Red Cross. In 1966, it became the Malawi Red Cross Society, and since then it has assisted countless numbers of vulnerable people in disaster relief, primary health care and other social services. In 1986, as tensions flared up in the neighboring Mozambican conflict, many fled into Malawi. At the time, the scope of the problem wasn't anticipated. By 1986, uh, there were close to 300,000 Mozambican uh, refugees in the country. But the policy of the former government was that they should not be referred to as refugees. We don't need to ask for international assistance uh, to uh, deal with this situation until the situation got out of hand around 1987. By then, the population of refugees had increased dramatically, and by 1992, the refugee population had peaked at 1.2 million people, which at that time was the largest concentration of refugees anywhere in the world. During the refugee operation, the Malawi Red Cross was the only organization in charge of distributing all of the food and non-food items to the refugees. In one year alone, roughly 8 million bars of soap and 140,000 tons of food commodities were distributed to the Mozambican refugees living in Malawi. It's a society that worked very close to the Mozambicans doing everything, first the aid, feeding them. Members of the society, particularly first the aiders, had to work very hard, day by day, even at night, to assist the Mozambicans. By 1994, the conflict in Mozambique was drawing to a close, and many refugees returned home. While these Mozambicans returned to their new country, Malawi was facing its own political changes. Under pressure from donors and religious groups, self-proclaimed life president of Malawi, Dr. Kamuzubanda, gave the country the chance to choose between his rule and multi-party politics. I have decided to call for 
a national referendum. The result was overwhelmingly in favor of democracy, and a new president, Bakiri Muluzi, was soon voted in. I, Bakiri Muluzi, do solemnly swear that I will well and truly perform. Today, as Malawians practice their newfound freedoms, however, it is clear democracy has not made them rich. The transformations in the country have also brought tremendous economic challenges. These changes have also affected the direction of the Red Cross in Malawi. When the refugees left, it lifted a cloud off of this country, and to see the problems that they're now facing is uh, quite profound. It is sunrise at Zereka camp, a reminder of the many recent changes in Malawi. A political prison under the previous government, the camp is now home to a new population, refugees seeking asylum from countries all over Africa. This man tending his crops here at the camp is far away from his home, back in Rwanda. At the other end of the camp, John Ondulu, Secretary General of the Malawi Red Cross Society, is reminded of his own experience here. I personally was here as a political detainee under the previous government. Free from the restrictions of the past and with a multi-party democracy in place, the focus of the Red Cross is shifting. We are moving towards long-term development programs in the field of education, health and social welfare, which is very much needed uh, for the people of Malawi. In the northern town of Rumpi, one such program is being overseen by Mrs. Joyce Nguira, who runs the Red Cross Primary Health Care Clinic. But as in so many areas of Malawi, just getting to the clinic is extremely difficult for those who need it most. The Malawi Red Cross Society took note of this, and plans were made to construct a clinic in the neighboring village of Ngonga. The town is quite far away from here. It's about 16 kilometers away from here. And there is no uh, bus service. And that's why they felt a clinic of this nature would be of help to them. Once completed, this facility will provide much of the same services of the Red Cross Clinic in Rumpi. While concentrating her efforts on completing this building, Joyce also looks forward to seeing more clinics like this in her area. Seeing that the Rumpi district is quite big, would want to have one or two more centers of this nature so that we are able to reach the big community which is growing bigger and bigger each time. Evidence of this expanding population can be seen 200 kilometers south of Rumpi at the Red Cross Under 5 Clinic in Nwelezi. Here, William Chibwe, Malawi Red Cross Society Divisional Coordinator, organizes the almost 500 women who have shown up to receive child care assistance. This clinic serves an area of 18,000 people from 20 different villages. After the women weigh their babies, the most needy are given nutritional aid. But as in many other Red Cross programs, the emphasis is changing. The government policy was to uh, supply free food to the hungry people. But uh, from 1995, we changed to Food for Work. Food for Work links food assistance with long-term development by having people work in their community in order to receive food aid. As part of its five-year strategy, the Malawi Red Cross plans to incorporate effective ways of implementing the Food for Work program. Although some people receive food for their work, Malawi Red Cross volunteers do not when they perform service under the Red Cross Society emblem.
These volunteers are building a house for an old woman in the community. Youth and adults alike, the Malawi Red Cross Volunteer Network is quite extensive and covers the country in assisting the most vulnerable. There are over 20,000 Malawi Red Cross volunteers in 26 divisions who can be mobilized at any time. Many of them are trained, I would say at least half, in disaster response, first aid, primary health care interventions. A well-known volunteer service that Red Cross provides is first aid training. The Malawi Red Cross has trained almost half of its volunteers in the basics of first aid and many more are taught each day. The Red Cross also trains staff of government institutions and private companies like these transportation workers from a local bottling company. One of the more long-term development activities that the Red Cross is working on is a well drilling project in a village in Salima. Dyson Chimuti, the Red Cross divisional coordinator here, discusses the particular need of this village because of its geographical location. Uh, this area, it's like on an island. It's between two rivers. As a result, people get the water direct from the rivers. So at least every year, there is an outbreak of Korea. In another week, this village will have a clean water supply and the incidence of cholera will undoubtedly go down. Through this project, Chimuti hopes to see more wells constructed. We have similar problems in most remote areas. So hope that the, if the program or the assistance can be extended to most of the areas so that, so that we can continue to alleviate the sufferings of the people. In addition to its involvement in community development projects, the Malawi Red Cross Society also actively works to raise funds to cover its core costs. During Flag Week in May, youth volunteers go into the community to raise money and awareness. The volunteers of the Malawi Red Cross are really, you know, dedicated to their duty. That gives some sort of strength to the community because they see exactly what the youth can do in a society. Through activities like Flag Week, the Malawi Red Cross is on its way to funding its own costs. However, because of the narrow economic base of Malawi, external donor assistance is still needed in order to reach the community with the kinds of services we've seen. I can only encourage the Red Cross to go on to contact people in Brussels to try to get access to the non-governmental organization funding, which are quite substantial. And uh, I certainly hope also in the future to be able to work with Red Cross here in Malawi. In order to maintain the strength of the organization for the future, the Malawi Red Cross has initiated programs like the Volunteer Leadership Development Program. This initiative will upgrade the level of governance and general management for the future. The training of uh, volunteers in leadership uh, is considered to be the most important aspect because they have been trained in how to conduct meetings, how to raise funds, and even how to uh, get prepared in the event of a disaster. It may look like a disaster just happened, but it's actually just one of the entertaining youth plays in Nanglukutiche near Machinga. Here, Red Cross youth provide a different kind of volunteer service. Through drama, these volunteers reach out to the rural communities, entertaining and conveying the fundamental principles of the Red Cross. Sometimes the topic is voluntary blood donation. Other times it may be community-based primary health care. Having drama, having any sort of praise by the youth at their age, 
it becomes a safe motivator to whatever they are doing. This is the second youth club that we are trying to revamp from the silence that was there for so many years. Sometimes breaking the silence means educating the community on the changing roles of the Red Cross. Uh, I feel there is a change now. Now it's more developmental. We are talking of uh, acquiring skills to the divisions so that divisions should be uh, self-reliant not only relying on from, uh, from uh, national headquarters. Being out in the rural area, away from the Red Cross national headquarters, this theater group is used to being self-reliant. It is this self-sustaining mentality that has created a positive effect in the development of their community. Back in Sanje, the Red Cross relief workers also know what it's like to be self-reliant. For the past few weeks, the rains have died down, but the ground is still wet. Today, on the way to delivering food items, the only relief truck gets stuck in a muddy patch of road. But the work of the Red Cross must go on. Disasters and the need for emergency aid will always be there. But as the sun breaks through the clouds, we can look forward to a future in which the Malawi Red Cross is involved in much more than disaster relief. A future in the long-term development of Malawi. <laughs>